Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trophy at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Gwent Edge, the show where we talk about interesting cards or decks to play around with. And today we're going to be doing just that because uh, we're going back into the Skellige Self Wound archetype and more specifically the two cards that were changed at the beginning of this season. We're now near the end of the season and I just wanted to highlight how broken these two cards actually are. So uh, let's head into the deck builder and take a quick look at the deck that we're going to be working with today. Because today we're going to be getting Siggy with it. Le yeah, yeah, I made a, a pun of a based on a Will Smith song. That's how far I've fallen today. Um, but yeah, we're going to be taking a look at Sigval. That's why the deck is called Getting Siggy with it. To uh, well, to just to to mirror the fact that I'm talking about getting Siggy with it. If you didn't catch the double entendre there yet, but the Sigval is a very broken card at the moment. I suspect that in a day or two when the patch hits, um, we're gonna be seeing a change to this ability. Uh, I'm not gonna go through the entire deck list. You can still find it in the link in the description to the Play Gwent website. Um, and you'll, you'll be able to copy it from there if you still wanna work with this deck. But I'm suspecting there might be a few changes to these two cards that I wanna discuss. Cause the first one, is Sigvault. So whenever this unit is damaged by other abilities, gain bleeding for the same duration instead. So he's basically immune to any sort of damage. On order, you damage a unit by the duration of the bleeding on self, and then purify self. If it was an enemy, you damage self by the same amount. If it was an ally, you boost self by the same amount. Meaning that if you put so much damage on Sigvault that he has, a hundred turns of bleeding on himself, you can boost himself by a hundred. This also means that this card is impervious to any damage, uh, aside from the only ability that he does to himself if you were to damage an enemy unit. Um, we're not going to be using that, ever. Um, but it also works incredibly well with the new ability of Not the Callus. It's not per se new, it is the same ability, but it's on order where you can use it every turn as long as he's 5 health or lower. Uh, so you can still damage an allied unit by half of its current power and then damage an enemy unit by the same amount. Since Sigvault is immune to damage, you can just put every single hit on Sigvault, giving Sigvault more bleeding and giving nut free damage every single turn. This combo between these two cards is insane. And I'll, uh, I'll, I'll demonstrate that in a few example matches um, really, really quickly here. But uh, Sigvault basically has the ability that Ceres Fearless has but for three provisions less. So he can damage another allied unit and then heal something. But in this case, he's gonna be boosting himself instead of healing. So it's technically even better than what Ceres can do. Uh, of course, Ceres can do that every turn, but Ceres is only four power and is very vulnerable to damage, of course. Um, another thing that I wanna compare Sigvault to, uh, and then I'll end the rant on that card here, is that Sigvault is basically a way better Draco Turtle for three provisions less. So Draco Turtle is the guy that gains armor every single time and if you get hit on the armor you boost yourself by the amount of armor you lose. But of course Draco Turtle has a limit to that. As long as when his armor is gone he won't get any extra armor so he will be starting to get vulnerable to damage. Sigvault never has that. So either you lock Sigvault, uh, that is an option, but just to counter that we have Malka Hakim Ale, a very cheap 4 provision card where we remove a lock. So the only other cards that can actually deal with Sigvald effectively are Yennefer's Invocation and Korati Heatwave. Just to remove that permanently. Because if you sick if you destroy Sigvald, I have two resurrectors in this deck. I have Sigrivas right and Fukushia, of course. So yeah, this is this is a powerhouse of a deck. We're using Earthstone Ritual where we can damage one of our own units five times by one and then get a six-point bear abomination. So uh, yeah. There's many options in this deck to just keep generating points, and I'm going to demonstrate that in a few example matches. And our first opponent is Guerrilla Tactics. That is basically perfect, because Guerrilla Tactics... Um, there's not much Guerrilla Tactics will be able to do because of the, uh, the, the wounding archetype that we have. Um, what we will be doing first is, of course, the Twirstark Veterans are really good. We actually have a really good starting hand here. We can get rid of the Mahakam Ale for now. Warrior Decree is one of our tutor cards, so we're definitely going to keep that. Artis is probably also a good card here. Um, and I can get the Covenant of Steel going as well. So that seems like the perfect starting hand. I could try 
and swap a few more cards, but they're going to be worse cards than I actually have. Unless I want to get rid of Sigdrifa's right to see... Ah, oh, Singer might actually be pretty good. There we go. There we go. Let's start with the Covenant of Steel as our defender and start working from there. Next up, we'll be putting down a uh, Hermit. And then from that, we can uh, start yeah, adding our loops a little bit. And then we have Karate Heatwave immediately. That makes sense. Tweersock Veteran on the board. I'm going to actually veil the Tweersock Veteran um, just to have something there that I can damage and then the uh, the Hermit on top of that. And Korati is already out of the way, so there's nothing our opponent really can do to get rid of that. So let's put the Hermit down first. It's going to be a Pitfall Trap. And that is perfect, because I uh, definitely want the damage to go on to the Veteran there. And then we got a Bomb on the wrong card. That's probably also not a good idea to do that. And then we can put Malacene in between here so we can get our loops going. So Malacene is always going to be our first, um, well, our first uh, card to play. Um, I could actually just keep this going a little bit longer to get Malacene to a higher point total, which is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to heal up uh, the Hermit. And then I'm just going to keep this loop going. Because Malacene is now at 11. Going to be at 13 in a minute. Um, I don't really need to use Merge Room just yet. Yeah, I think this is fine. There we go. So Malacene is... Ah, and we got Ceres out as well. That's too bad. But a little bit too much damage on our own cards. But Malacene is at 13 right now. So that's already a good bit of carryover if we want to. Then we got the Markham Ale back. The Peller... Mm, do I really care about the Peller? I don't think so. We get another Hermit. Um, and I can actually get rid of that Hermit here and get another Priest going. But let's go into the final round. This match seems to be progressing really quickly. We get Sigdrifas right and we get the Peller again. Uh, we can definitely get rid of the Peller. And we get Nut. Nut is perfect. I can actually get rid of a Priest. We get another Tweersock Veteran. So this basically is a perfect hand. Uh, yeah, not, mu not much else to talk about here. Uh, so let's finish redrawing. There we go. Uh, the only really big card that's left is Filled Carl. And of course, Karate Heatwave, so we can choose whatever we want to use here. Uh, I could even Karate... I think that's on turn start, right? So that is perfect, because I can put the Tweersong Veteran on a row. And then he'll damage that by two and put it to eight points in one go. There we go. And now we get the Cat Witcher. Which is fine. I'm going to put Artis down on the field as well. Get the uh, Svalblood Fanatic down. And Artis is a card, as long as he's on the ranged row, you actually get... Um, well, every unit that is played will get its health halved. So, which is very, very cool indeed. And then Artis is moved over there. And I think, yeah, Milva Sharpshooter needs to do two damage. And Milva is now on the board. Yeah, just like that, which is fine. I can actually put the priest somewhere else now. I'm gonna be resurrecting Malacene now. So I'm gonna put Fukusia here, Malacene right next to that. And then I'm gonna damage the Tweersark Veteran by one, which will allow Malacene to take it back up to eight. There we go. Malacene, very juicy card at the moment. And we get another trap for our troubles, which means that we're going to be putting this Fallblood Priest right over here, which does count as a cultist. Uh, no trap actually triggers. And now we can put um, some rain over here, just to get that loop going. And then we get making a bomb, which will only add more bleeding. That's not too bad right now. Um, I can now put uh, Sigvald up. Uh, front and start putting some rain on the back row yeah like this and then keep Malacene going up and there goes uh, Milva so that combo piece is gone they might have um, Brehan Brehan will probably be able to take out Sigvald in a minute unless I stop actually playing um, hmm I could stop playing 
special cards now. I'm gonna stop playing with the um, the rain either. But Murdrum is gonna put Sigvald up to 16, which is gonna be higher than Malacene. Um, but I can use not the Callus now. So uh, let's put him over here. And that's yeah, a ball. And that's good because I need that card to be five or lower. I can hit Sigvald and then hit the Cat Witcher, so that doesn't go around anymore. And I don't need to use any rain, and yeah, Siggy is still pretty good. So now you'll see the combo with uh, Nut the Callus going really strong here. They can kill Nut the Callus, but I can still resurrect Nut the Callus, which is fine. I create, they create another trap, which is gonna be, I think. The Serpent Trap, right? Where you kill the highest card on the board. I'm gonna bait that out with um, Royal Decree. So Royal Decree into Viltcarl, that's gonna kill Malacene. There we go, with the Serpent Trap. And then the uh, Veteran, so that's both of their... Um, oh, I should have put Viltcarl over there, but that's not a problem. Um, so both of their Serpent Traps are gone now, and I can put Viltcarl up to... Yeah, I need to put them up to the. Should have put them right next to the uh, the priest. Although I think the bleeding actually hits first before the uh, the priest actually gets to do his ability. We get another trap there, but I'm presuming that's not going to be too important. I'm going to put Murdroom on Sigvald. There we go. So Sigvald up to 14 and seven bleeding now. Six bleeding. I'm going to be putting Nut back into play as well. There goes Fukushia. We get a... Okay, Crushing Trap. And then Eldane, but Eldane is not going to be enough. And I can put Sigdrifas right... Well, what, what would be the best option here? Probably just Nut again. Or Malacene. Malacene is probably better. Yeah, Malacene is going to be better here. So Malacene over there. Um, and I can actually now trigger Sigvald's ability, but I'm not going to just yet. Yeah, I'm not going to just yet. There we go. Should have put Malacene on the back row to not get hit with damage there. And we get a reset on Malacene, but yeah. There we go. There's so many options that we can just tank damage that a deck like that has barely any effect on us. Next up, we face Ursine Ritual against us. That might be interesting as well. Kind of depends on the um, on the amount of tall removal cards they have. And I see two cards that I need to toss anyway. So the, the Fanatic always go, goes because I can use that with um, Artis. Um, and Cyrus always goes because you don't want to have that just available like that. And Double Mahakam Ale to start with is also not such a good option. And we get Sigvald as a start. We don't get Malacene yet. Uh, so I think I'm just going to do Covenant of Steel first. Again, as a defender, and then just put Malacene right next to that. So an Earth Sign Ritual Mirror, that could actually mean that we have plenty of um, leeway with our cards. And we get the Uncrate Longship instead. Ooh, interesting. Um, so that means I'm going to put Malacene on the board. There we go. Like this. And she gets damaged a little bit. But she gets boosted back up to 7, and we get two 7s right next to each other. Um, not yet in Igni range, but could be dangerous there. Rock for Hunter goes onto the Defender, but the Defender will get an extra bit of uh, armor in a minute. So let's put the Hermit right next to that. He'll get damaged again. Um, and now we can actually put some rain. Oh, I'm going to wait with the rain. Uh, rain might actually be better in a minute. Uh, so let's just hold off on that. There we go. First armor piece on the Defender, on the Covenant of Steel. And then we get Gutting Slash, which is six points. Um, I'm going to use... I'm going to actually heal that up with the Hafru Singer. Like this. And then put a Veil on top of that, which still is going to give us the, uh, the next bit of armor. Uh, I could start putting Rain, but it's really not worth it at the moment. There we go. Defender's still going strong, and I could even Mahakamel if I want to. But yeah, we got a pass. 
which I think is fine. Malacene is now at 12. It's going to be at 14. Uh, this is going to be a lippy deck, isn't it? Judging from the cards that they played, it's going to be a lippy deck. Lippy has Corotti, but only if I let them use it twice. So if I now push in the next round, should be able to take the, uh, the high road here. Just push until they have nothing left. I still have the defender if I want to go for it, unless of course it gets purified, which is also an option. Uh, but we can start slow. We still have Saris as well, which is really good. Uh, so let's get rid of Saris and the Valor. We get this Fallblood Fanatic. Not ideal. Because um, that means that Fukusha should go to the defender, actually. I'm gonna put down the Twirsock Veteran first. And we get the Uncreate Warrior adding some more bleeding on that card, which is ideal. I'm gonna put a Priest right next to that, which means that the Veteran will go to 8 in the, at, at the end of my turn, because that's tick. And tick, there we go. And Saris pops out for that as well. So Saris, they want to take that out as quickly as possible. If they don't, yeah. It's a very strong card that's now on the board, and you don't want to see that happen. I could now resurrect Medicine to bait out Karate. And I think I'm going to do that because it is just a better option here. Um, so let's play Fukusha into Malacene and just push this really hard. That's going to get Karate immediately, but it is worth it in my mind. So, opponent is deciding probably going for Fabjorn. Raiding Fleet. Putting four turns of bleeding and the longship on the board. I think it's time for Siggy then already. Ziggy's gonna get hit by the the boat, and then Melusine can actually put some rain on top of that. And now we're just gonna get two ticks of damage on Sigvald every turn. Which sounds like a really good option to me. I can resurrect one of my bronzes. I have the fanatic to put right next to Melusine as well. So this is this is really good. Skiordal is gonna hit the veteran, but I can resurrect the veteran in a minute. Or I just go for Nut now. I'm going to put Nut over here, which means that he'll get the uh, benefit of his uh, recurring order ability in a minute. Uh, and I can put some more rain on the back row. There we go. So now Nut's ability should refresh, yeah, because it goes from left to right, so Nut gets hit first. Goes to 5 and then checks, okay, do I have the... Uh, the reasons for my ability going down to uh, to refresh again. Am I at Berserk 5, basically? So now the Blood Eagle onto Fukusha. So this is a warrior stack then. Rupture. Rupture is gonna go on, yeah, Nut. That is fine, I guess. I could actually, ma actually Mahakam Ale Nut now. Just to get him to survive uh, the hit. Yeah, I think I want to put that on Siggy instead. Um, losing those five points is not a problem right now. So yeah, I'm going to put the Svalblood Fanatic over here. And then damage uh, Sigvald onto Tyrkvi over here. And then I'll lose Nut, but it's, uh, it's for the best, I think. And I can put some more rain over there as well. There we go. Sigvald goes up to 10 points of bleeding. And then the Bear Witcher kills the Fanatic, which is fine. Um, I can actually resurrect um, the uh, Hofu Singer even, but no, Twirsak Veteran first. Right over here. I uh, can put some more rain in the back there, because I'm still hitting cultists. And then that's that. Keeping that board really clean. And Sigvald is going to go to, I think, to 13. I can lock some. Yeah, they can lock something now. But I have the uh, the Mahakam Ale to deal with that. Uh, so Mahakam Ale on Sigvald. And I can use his ability in a minute. But I still don't need to. Um, I could actually just do Hero Pass. Because right now my... Yeah, I think this might actually be the perfect opportunity. I could hit something now. Uh, Fukusha mainly and then see where that gets us although it's not necessary 
it's not necessary just yet. We can put Sigvald up to 13 or 12 because he loses a point of beating, of course. Then Grammis can purify Sigvald. That is also absolutely fine. I don't really need to use Sig Sigvald at this point. And then I can use, um, yeah, Malacene in the back. Um, damage Sigvald five times. There we go. And there we go. And then let him hit... Uh, hmm. You can hit something for five as well. And then let him hit himself. But that's going to damage himself. So that's not worth it. This is the better option. And then put the, uh, the priest right over here. There we go. 58, 13, it's going to go to... He's going to lose another two points. But of course, he still has... They still have their leader ability there. War of Clans is not going to do much aside from resurrecting that. And that's going to be another seven points. It's going to kill the priest. And then it's going to be Coyote or something like that. So it, I don't think this is going to be enough. And it's Blue Boy Lugal, so five hits on that. Could also go on to Sigvald, by the way. Or on the, uh, the Veteran. They are re really lucky with that. That was three hits on Malacene. And two on Sigvald. Okay, fair enough. And there we go. Another win. Not the extreme Sigvald that I wanted to show off, but still uh, definitely showing off how powerful that card is for just seven provisions. And we got to pro with that. That is amazing. Okay. Yeah, I didn't get to play too much this season. Um, so uh, there we go. Pro at last. And last but not least, we have Nilfgaard, of course. Always need to fight against Nilfgaard at least once. Tactical decision this time. Um, which means that there probably won't be too much... Um, counters, too many counters against what I'm playing. This is a really good starting hand, by the way. Both of my Resurrectors, Artis, Malacene, Defender, and Royal Decree. I'm gonna get rid of Freya's Blessing just to see if I can get Siggy or Nut already. And I don't get either, okay. Uh, I also don't really have something to hit right now. Um, which I don't think is that much of a problem. I can start even with Artis. Which is probably going to be pretty good here. Uh, so let's put Artis down with the Svalblood Fanatic. Um, on the same row, actually. And I get Crystal Skull on Artis. So that's going to be a good lure to get some removal out of the way. Because the, the fun thing about this deck is there are so many cards that your opponent needs to remove. Artis is a problem. The Defender is a problem. Melusine is a problem. Um, Nut and Siggy are a very big problem. So all of those cards need to be removed. Saris as well. Um, like that, as you can see. So Vilja Force is going to pull something out of the deck. And that's going to be... Oh, perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was ideal. Uh, so that was the first removal already. The first tall removal that just destroys a card. I'm just going to take advantage of all of that. And we can just keep going with this operator. So this is... Ooh, okay. Okay, that might be problematic just a little bit. So it is uh, thinning. So Siggy and Nut are in very big danger of being removed. Um, I'm always tempted to get Royal Decree and put Siggy in, uh, in play already. Uh, so I'm going to put Malacene here first. It's probably either going to be Yennefer Invocated or Karatid, but I'd love to see it. Yeah, so now we're going to see our deck being tinned a lot. And we get the Pelag out first, so that is good. I think I should probably just go for Siggy now. Just so I know that he's in my hands. It's really tough at this point to decide that. Because I have a really good cycle going here. I think I'm going to leave it the chance. And just uh, heal up Malacene here. That's only one point. Should have done uh, the other way around. Um, but yeah, and let's just leave the uh, the cycle going here. I think I'm even gonna pass. So that's just informant. Because that's not really doing much for them. Uh, they're getting rid of a few of my cards. But that's the only thing that they're basically doing. And we're six versus six here. I don't really have healing going. So I could put the Hermit down as well. 
and get another bit of uh, engine capability going and then just pass and Saris is out as well. That's not ideal, but it was going to happen regardless. I still have a very good hand and our opponent keeps playing, which is interesting as well. So Traherne is now going to definitely banish. Oh boy, then that means that there are very bad cards on top of my deck. I'm just going to leave it as is. This should net me enough points to get the round. There we go. It did get us enough points to get the round, and we don't get the downside of losing a lot of cards now. Because I'm definitely going to keep pushing now. Uh, so if I can get Siggy and Nut in hand, that would be ideal. Korati is also nice. The Hermit is better than the Priest, I think, uh, in conjunction with Malacene at least. So let's get rid of that, and then Mahakam Ale... Okay, we get Siggy. I mean, we're definitely going for this now. I'm just trying to see the sequence here. Yeah, Defender first. And then work from there. We'll have to see. I'm going to have to put Nut out really quickly to avoid him getting banished. And every time something like that happens, I'm almost tempted not to put this any further. I can actually get rid of Snowdrop. And there might be a Defender there as well. But I, I lost the Paler a long time ago in the beginning of the match. This might actually be really interesting. Um, so the ideal line would now be first Hermit, then Fukusha into Malacene, and then get Nut out. But I feel like Nut might disappear from the deck before this is over. We'll see. I'm going to put the Hermit right next to the Defender now. I'm going to start getting that loop going. Next up, I really need to get Malacene in between that. And we get Korati on the Defender. I'm gonna keep trying this. So that was Korati. So the Defender is gone, but Malacene is still alive. So Malacene goes over here. That is the right way of doing that. Is there another way? Yeah, Yennefer's Invocation, I suppose. If they also have Yennefer's Invocation, I'm gonna be very mad, but... Because that was Viljeforce, Korati, and Yennefer's Invocation. And that's Kingslayer. Please not Nut. Okay. I keep risking it, but I really need to get Nut out of the deck. I'm just... Yeah, I'm risking too much now. I'm gonna put Siggy down first. Um, so Siggy down first, definitely getting some rain down as well. And I guess we'll see now. So either I use... Ooh, if that is Nut, I'm gonna be mad. No, it's not Nut. Wow, I'm really risking it here. Okay, so now we can get Royal Decree and get uh, Nut out of the deck. Um, Nut is going to go over here. And then I can start damaging Sigvault and getting rid of Kingslayers. And I can actually damage Nut by two. So he gets his, leader ability, uh, his order ability back every single turn. And I didn't use the rain. I should have used more rain. I'm a dum-dum. Swap this unit's power with another unit's power. Okay. Fair enough. I can actually use the Huffer Singer now to heal Melusine. Uh, put some more rain down. Um, and I can use Nut again on top of more Vron for his. There we go. And that's going to heal even... Why didn't that... Ah, oh, I already healed. That was why. Oh! Oh, perfect. Perfect. So now... I can actually Sigdrifa's right and get Saris out. Because um, this is going to be ideal. Saris is very powerful like that. So I can put Saris out. Heal up Malacene to full. And then hit that on Sigvald. And Sigvald is going to get 25 points of uh, bleeding now. Um, and now I can hit Sigvald again. And get that on Tibor. Uh, I'm putting some more rain in the back there. There we go. And now we get Yennefer's Invocation on Melusine, but that is not going to matter. Because um, right now I'm going to do... Just checking what I can do here. So I can damage... Um, Vildkarl by 3. That's not the best option here. Um, I need to heal Sigvald. And hit that on Vildkarl. So that's easy peasy. Um, now I can hit Nut for 4, 
on Snowdrop. Then I'm gonna hit Sigvald a couple of times with my own ability. Hit one of my own Deafening Sirens, yes. And then Korati uh, Ivor Evil Eye. There we go. And that's how you see how powerful Sigvald is. It's just insane. 42 points. 42 points on a 7 provision card. And a lot of damage that went into that as well. So that card is just insane and it's going to get nerfed. Expect that in a few days. I mean, I think that explains enough uh, of the deck. Uh, it just showcased enough how powerful these two cards actually are. So Sigvald and not the Kallus together are really powerful. If you have Ceres on top of that, you saw that. That was just because uh, Malacene lost all her power. We could heal that to full with Ceres and then put all the damage on Sigvald, which got that into points again. So again... Sigvald with Ceres and Nut are just, it's, it's just a, a huge powerhouse. Any sort of damage that your opponent can try to do will get negated by any of those cards because you can shuffle your points around until you get everything back again. Um, I just played three matches and I won those pretty easily if I can say so myself. Uh, it's not because I'm a very good player, it's just because these cards are so incredibly powerful. I said this before, but there's nothing your opponent really can do. There's so much to remove that there are still combo pieces left. As you saw in the last match, we saw Viljefort, Yennefer Invocation, Ivar Evil Eye, Korati Heatwave, and that was not enough to stem the tide against this deck. The cards are just too powerful. Um, almost every single card needs to be removed if you don't want to face a huge amount of points. Artis is de detrimental to every card that your opponent plays. Malicine is just a huge points pool. Uh, Saris can heal anything that you throw at it. The Covenant of Steel can defend all of that, so if that is not removed, uh, you have no way of targeting those units behind it. Nut is a damaging powerhouse. Um, Sigvald. Best card in the game right now, I can say that easily. And then Vildkarl, even that should be removed completely, otherwise it's another 12 points for 7. Uh, and even the bronze cards are very good engine potential cards. So this deck is just incredibly powerful and uh, especially in the right hands if you can shuffle some, uh, some points around. You can see, you saw in that final match how quickly that just turns around. If you can heal something to full, especially Malacene with her high base power, it just is is an unstoppable force that really needs to get nerfed and what i want to see nerfed are these two cards repeating the order ability is insane on natakalis um it just allows you to put huge amounts of damage on sigvald and sigvald himself he shouldn't be immune to every single bit of damage he shouldn't be seven provisions he shouldn't be able to generate this amount of points it's it's insane it's an immune damage well a damage immunity card that can generate so much, so many points. It's just, yeah, it's it's just crazy. I think I've ranted about this card for long enough. That was the the, mo the, the most important point of this video. And uh, I guess we'll see in a day or two whether this card gets nerfed. I do hope so, because it's it's something that you can see that a lot of decks try to build around, that you need to count to Sigvold in some way uh, or another um, just to get true to the ladder somehow and that's going to be it for this video um if you want to try out the deck yourself i think by the time this video releases you have about one day to uh, experiment with it uh, before probably either at least one of those cards will see a change um but let me know what you think about it what your opinion is on these overpowered cards and uh, i guess i'll see you guys in the new season for more gwent edge videos so thank you guys enormously for watching and uh, don't forget to leave a like on this video as well subscribe if you haven't uh, and you can check all the other videos on this channel as well so again thank you guys enormously for watching um, keep everything tight stay happy and goodbye and of course as always stay nutty goodbye <laughs>